let's talk about the uh, forecast that was just issued to the public here this morning. Yeah, the work doesn't stop during the off season. We've been busy all winter preparing the hurricane forecast for this upcoming season. So for this year, we're forecasting 13 to 18 named storms across the Atlantic Basin, seven to 10 of which we expect to become hurricanes. And then of those seven to 10, three to five major hurricanes, that's category three or above, but the number that everybody wants to know about, how many impacts for the United States. Last year, we saw six, a very, very destructive year. This year, we're forecasting three to six hits on the United States. So overall, not as busy as last year, but still at or above the historical averages. All right, Alex, everybody wants to know, what, do you, what goes in to making this uh, forecast? Yeah, there's many factors we look at and we'll go one by one here. Number one factor that we look for is this transition from La Nina to probably neutral for most of the season. Right now, the water's in the eastern Pacific, a little bit cooler than average, but during the whole entire season, we're expecting things to be right around neutral, but a lot of times those neutral patterns can be very, very close to La Nina's. And when you see that, that indicates less than or lower than average wind shear across the Atlantic basin, which can allow for more hurricanes to form. All right, also, uh, let's talk about this. With that neutral phase, something that you uh, told me about that I was unaware of, you tend to get more Afri waves coming off Africa, which means more opportunity for storms. Yeah, it's kind of a delicate balance because yeah. if you are, are, you know, a lot of storms will come off of Africa and the beefier that they are, the better chance they have to develop. And during a neutral year, we can sometimes get these strong storms to come off of Africa and then develop. But if they're too strong, they can actually bring in some dry air with them. So it's a delicate balance here. If we get these storms to be a little bit too strong, they can actually bring a lot of African dust in. And that can actually, would actually be a good thing because that would actually choke off some of those waves emerging from Africa. Now, last year at this time, we were looking at exceptionally warm water in uh, the Atlantic Basin. Not quite as warm as it was this time last year, John, uh, Alex, but still the water temperature anomalies are, 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 are higher. Yeah, and this is concerning because everywhere yeah. where you see orange and yellow, that's above average water temperatures. And then if it stays this way, which we think it will for the next couple of months, all the way through hurricane season, that we're talking about the, a lot of fuel in the, uh, in, in, the, in the Atlantic there for development. And it's not only about the sea surface, it's how deep it goes where you have very deep warm water. Now, let's take a look at this. Based on the pattern and previous years that have some of the same uh, factors, you're already coming up with a landfall forecast. Yeah, we took a look at 12 years, 12 years that had similar atmosphere conditions to this year, and we plotted where those tropical storms and hurricanes made landfall, and you can see those denoted here by those dots. The circled areas are where we see clustering, and these are the areas that we're thinking have an above average chance of impacts. But if you live in the Northeast, you see that red dot in New Jersey, that was Hurricane Sandy. We definitely don't want anybody across any of the coastlines to let their guard down. AccuWeather lead hurricane expert Alex De Silva. Alex, thanks for joining us again on AccuWeather Early.